Welcome to the Gospel Hour with David. Glory be to God, Jesus Christ is alive. Hey you guys, today I want to go over and maybe the next few videos or, or recordings over chapters 5, 6, and 7 from the book of Matthew, the great Sermon of the Mount, or on the Mount. And, uh, guys, I wanted to let you know I'm going to be posting a couple of videos here shortly uh, about my work in my daily job. And, you know, that's the thing. I don't want you to misunderstand me and think that I'm trying to show off how tough I am or what a great worker I am or anything that has to do anything with work. Only I want to share with you the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, the, the beauty of it, the beauty of being in the wilderness, the beauty of, of being in nature. And, and who knows, there's been these two deer that come and they'll lay down about 40 feet away and they watch me work. They just lay there watching me work all day. It's kind of neat, you know. Uh, so I want to share that with you. Who knows, maybe we'll cut down a few trees, show you a little bit about uh, fire mitigation. And uh, so anyway, let's get back to the Bible. That's the thing with the Bible. How do we transfer this word, these teachings and instructions, into a daily use? You know, how do we use it as a tool to work in our lives? That's the thing is faith is working through love. Gotta love yourself, gotta love your neighbors, working through love. So chapters 5, 7, 6, and 7 of the book of Matthew are all about uh, happiness. True happiness. And, and what does it mean to be truly happy in, in not the eyes of God, or the eyes of other people, but happy within your own body. I mean, happy with your own skin. How many of us are, are out there in the world and we, we despise the very skin we live in? Right? And, and we're seeking to for makeup. Seeking for jewelry. We're seeking for better clothing. Anything that we can find that's going to enhance our beauty. Right? But what about the beauty within? Do we, can we live within our own skin? What about when we're depressed? Can we live in our own skin while we're being depressed? Can we live within our own skin while we're being rejected, uh, abused, mistreated? Not being appreciated? Right? How many Christians or people want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and nobody appreciates it. Or, or you want to spread kindness and, and nobody appreciates that. Your time, your energy, giving those things away to a people who don't appreciate it, don't care. Yet it's in those moments, right? God is manifested. If we put these teachings and instructions to life. Make this our way of life. This is how we are going to find happiness. Happy to live within our own skin in this world that's here and been given to us and in the reality God has given us. How are we going to be happy with that? And it comes through these teachings. This is what the laws of Moses, all the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, right? The Hebrew Bible, all the prophets, and the writings of the prophets. This is what they were trying to convey to the people. When Jonah was preaching to those in Nineveh, this is the message he's trying to convey. When, when, when Elijah is preaching to the children of Israel, this is the message he's trying to convey. I want you to know that reading in the books of Matthew and all the New Testament, that they always tell you something, and you have a knowledge of something that none of the rest of the world had. 
back in this day and for thousand years later. You know who Jesus Christ is. He is the Christ or the Messiah, the anointed one, the chosen one, chosen by God. chosen by God to unveil himself to the people, his children. Chapter 5, the book of Matthew. Let's begin. Let's dissect this and, and talk about it and see where else did Jesus speak of these same things. This was the message, the good news, the keys to happiness, the keys to eternal life, the keys to peace. The keys to, to having God eat supper with you. Not sometime in the future, but today. He says, verse 2, chapter 5, book of Matthew. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, right? And this is God our Father. If, if God our Father was right here, this is exactly what he would say. Why is the world in the chaos that it's in. There's only one way out of the punishment. Believe God. Believe He loves you. Believe He's in control. Believe God is righteous and good and will always do what is righteous and good. And He has your best interests in His heart. Even when we ourselves don't even know what it is we need. God knows what we need. Even in our prayer. We're not to be praying and babbling and waving our arms and trying to make a, a spectacle of ourselves. Right? It's not about other people's opinion. It's about our relationship with God being with God. Personally with God. Spending that time in that moment as his son spends time with his father. It's not about showing other people. God loves you. Or you love God. It's just, it's just about being with God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is that? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Financially poor? Right? Deprived of the things or the blessings of this world? Is, is that what it means? Being poor in spirit? Let me show you and explain to you an example of, of what Jesus Christ was trying to convey when he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit in spirit and we got to go to Luke it says Jesus is teaching and he's teaching in parables and, and why did he teach in parables because God had blinded them and so he taught to them in parables so that they would be blinded so they could not understand yet to you it's been given the wisdom and the understanding to you it's been given. He says, and why did he blind them? Because their hearts grow cold. Because of the wickedness of their own deeds. They loved God with lip service, but their hearts were far from him. Chapter 16, verse 19 from the book of Luke. Blessed are the poor in spirit. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate laid a poor man named Lazarus. There was a rich man dressed in fine clothing and purple and all the things. What was the rich man's name? don't know. What was the poor man's name? 
Lazarus. God knows who his people are. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And I know them by name, says the Lord. And he was covered with sores. And he desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. He, th he was completely content with being poor. He was content with his life. He was content with the reality God had given him. He was poor and covered in sores. And he would have been content having just the scraps of the man's table. Being content with whatever life God has given you. Not seeking selfish ambition, pride, or, or things to boast of. Was it seeking fine clothing or large homes? He was content being covered in sores. In fact, the dogs would come around and would lick his wounds. Nobody would show him compassion. The man who had plenty yet withheld that plenty from a, from a person he could see every day. We're not talking about saving the world, we're, we're not talking, but, but the people we can see every day who are standing in front of us and have no compassion on them. Knowing we, we are all slaves to sin, yet have no compassion on our neighbor who sins differently than we do. For all have sinned. All have sinned. Are we content with the world and the life God has given us? Are we content with the image God has given us? Are we content? the life we have but Lazarus is content in fact if he just had a few crumbs he would be content with that is it God who allows famine pestilence war amongst the earth does he allow that or, or is it the stiff necked people of the world who reject God's Holy Spirit. Sin, excess. No matter how much technology we have, sin exists. No matter how much comforts of life we have, sin exists. And, and our sins have an impact on, on other people more so than we think they have on ourselves. The poor man died. He was carried by, away by angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also was buried and in Hades, being tormented. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Sometimes when we're Lost in frustration and depression and blaming others. Our tongue is on fire. Sometimes when we're trying to belittle other people, abuse other people, to make others feel bad so that we can feel better about ourselves, our tongue is on fire. And it is from our tongue the truth flows out, whether we're good or, or bad. Because when we speak it, we manifest it. When we manifest it, it then becomes a reality. And it is 
through our own faith, it will be done to us. What about unforgiveness? Unforgiveness. Not being able to forgive your enemy. Not being able to surrender to your enemy's control. But sometimes God places us in the hands of our enemy so that the glory of his goodness can shine through us into the enemy. Love thy enemy. You have heard it was been said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And Jesus says, you know, the depths of hell and the punishment of it are, are so magnifying, so awesome, and so great that it would be better to cut off your hand than to sin. If your hand is causing you to sin, it's better to enter into life missing body parts, being lame, broken, or blind than it is to enter into hell with a full body. And this man is crying out in his own torment by the actions of his own deeds, his the teachings of happiness or the Sermon on the Mount are, are all formed around the walk. Not the talk. Jesus never said, hey, speak like me. No, Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, never said, preach like me. He said, follow me. Me. That, that, that means you have to walk after him. It's always been about the walk. Not the talk. Not the lip service. It's not about speaking in tongues and a language of, of babbling where, where nobody can understand it. That, that is confusion. And why would God want you to be confused? I'd rather speak five words you could understand than a thousand that, that no one can understand. He says, Blessed are you more than any creatures on earth. Look how God so loves the sparrow, yet you're worth more than many sparrows. Look at the lilies and the flowers, yet God will dress you greater than the flowers. And although we endure suffering, and, and, and is Lazarus suffering? He was content with whatever he had. He wasn't complaining. He wasn't blaming others. He, he would have just been happy with a few scraps. And he called out again, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Right? And send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in cool water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this flame. Do you feel as though life is full and filled with anguish? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are, are, are the meek. They will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Right. Blessed are those who show mercy. For they will be shown mercy. Abraham said, child, remember that in your lifetime you received good things. And Lazarus in like, like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this, 
between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able. Those who would show you mercy are unable to show you mercy. The time for mercy and grace has passed. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, Right? The man said, but show them mercy. You know, it's not until we experience the bad of life. It's not until we experience abuse. It's not until we experience those days of, of being broke down, ripped down, that we understand. It's not until we experience what it's like when nobody will help you, when nobody will appreciate you, when nobody will recognize you. tough to understand what they're going through until it happens to us. Now show them mercy. Show my brothers mercy. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should be raised or rise from the dead. You didn't believe in Moses. You didn't believe in the prophets. What's going to make you believe in Jesus Christ, he who was raised from the dead? Jesus didn't come to break the law or to release us really from the law, but rather to fulfill the law. Because in the law, in the fulfillment of the law, is Jesus Christ. God loves you. Don't be angry. Don't be angry with your brother. Don't be upset. Don't be angry with the enemies and those who persecute you. Yet learn how to deal with them. Learn how to engage with them. Learn how to weave your way through this world and this life of, of evil without being consumed, without being broken to pieces, without losing your, your faith. Anybody who gets angry is subject to judgment. The way we judge others, that's the measure used to us. If we judge, we will be judged. You want to be happy, don't judge other people. Stop blaming other people. Be poor in spirit. Be content with whatever God has given you. I don't have a future. I don't have a future. I don't even put my hopes in the future or tomorrow because whatever God's will is, that's what shall be done. Can I be content with that? Blessed are the pure in heart. I'm not seeking the glory of men. I'm just trying to be myself and the best self I can be. And I can't be happy unless I find forgiveness for my brothers and my sisters. And if they're unwilling to forgive me for me being imperfect, for me being a sinner, well, by their own measure, they'll be judged. They won't have a friend. And I have every right to walk away. And you have every right to walk away from abuse, persecution, Hatred. We have every right to believe 
We're worthy to rejoice with God in the moment because this is what we have right now, this moment. Christ came to fulfill the law. And this is the law, and this is what sums up the law. It's not about clothing. It's not about social status. It's not about your career. God so loved you. He gave you eternal life. God so loved you. He desires to be with you. God so loved you. He gave you a perfect gift. The greatest thing about Jesus Christ being the King is He follows His own rules. He doesn't make rules like the kingdoms and the people of this world for everybody to live by, yet while they don't follow their own rules. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and being. Jesus Christ come to do what, what he wished others would do to him. He is God. I come to love you in the same way I wished I could be loved. Un- Conditionally. God reigns on the unjust. God reigns on the wicked. He feeds them all. God judges no one. But our own measure judges us. Jesus came to, to love you with all his heart with all his mind, with all of his soul, and his being. Do the same. Yet while you were sinning, he died for you. That's love. And there is no greater love than that. He's already done it. And has called you friend. Friend. He doesn't lord over his kingship as, as the people of this world who, who seek honorable subjects, honorable servants, or, or to honor you for your service, or, or your work, or, or your goodness. Or, he doesn't... He greets you as a brother. And he follows his own rules. He greets you as a brother, made in flesh and blood. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is alive. Let the fruits of the Spirit manifest through you. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. This sums up the law. And the prophets. Love others in the same way you wish to be loved. See you next time.